Hey, cock 45 here with a couple of 45s. Let's take a couple of shots at that uh, diamond, or excuse me, square. <laughs> that one's shot dry. Let's sling it on the table. All right. Oh, RO Compact. <laughs> we won't sling this one because it's not mine. But what we're doing is we're shooting. Did you figure that one out? Yes, we have the RO Compact from Springfield, Range Officer Compact. And we have my uh, Colt Series 80, 1911, 5 inch. Before we send back the compact uh, to Springfield, which honestly is kind of hard to send back, to tell you the truth, but you know, I, I, I am very fortunate. I have some really nice 1911s now. How many 1911s do you need? Uh, but before we send it back, I wanted to get it out one more time and shoot it and uh, thought about just a regular chapter two. We thought maybe a comparison of some sort here would be uh, uh, more valuable to you, valuable viewers right and just touch on a couple of things shoot them a little bit but one thing that has surprised me in recent years as i have told you all many times I've told you a lot of lies a lot of times haven't I? but I, i've told you recently that since i got the uh, uh not the compact but the uh commander size 45 the the ed brown cobra carry i had actually before we started doing videos i guess but uh but it's still been fairly recently i was surprised that it shoots well, not because, just because it's an Ed Brown, but the uh, the commander size slide and barrel, four and a quarter inches, was a surprise to me. I just really had in my head for some reason, all these decades, that you really needed a five inch with that big 45 slug for it to feel right and be shootable, because it is a fairly hard recoiling round, you know, the 45 ACP. And, uh, I just had a mental block against a shorter barrel. For one thing, you get too short, I know reliability can be an issue. It's tough on a 1911. It was designed around a five inch slide and barrel and a 230 grain, you know, full metal jacket ammo. And there have been some shorter versions of it that have not been all that reliable. And you want a firearm to be 100% reliable if you can get it, right? But we've shot some of these, you know, that, that commander size gun seems to be utterly reliable. This thing has been utterly reliable so far. Now today we may have a malfunction. You know, sometimes it happens, but it has not malfunctioned on us. And you've seen the first video with it, hopefully. Uh, so we just wanted to do a little comparison, and I, I guess it's a little bit of a uh, 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 subtitle for this video was in praise of smaller guns again. You know, here I go. It's kind of one of the themes around here, whether it's a Glock or anything else. Smaller guns can be very shootable. Even with this big old 45 slug, I uh, give a little more information, maybe a little more insight. Uh, you watch me shoot them. You might be able to see more than I know that I'm aware of just from from shooting the two. But both John and I uh, observed in our shooting of this before the first video, in the first video, and then even after the first video, that this thing just shoots awfully well for a four-inch barrel. Uh, it's easy to control. Uh, even though it's an alloy frame, it's not very heavy. Um, so we both have been a little bit surprised by this one, especially because it has an alloy frame and it's a four incher instead of a four and a quarter. So, you know, it's, it's hard to, to get John excited about a little 1911 and me too, but we like this gun. Okay. We're, we're pretty impressed with it. And, and it doesn't matter who makes it. You know, we're going to say that. Uh, so let's take a couple more shots. I might just use these magazines we have loaded here rather than the, it does come, of course it holds six in, in that magazine. So it is a seven shot, six plus one, because it's a shorter grip too. And if you recall from the first video, I did stick some, uh, <laughs> some Talon grips, uh, r uh, remnants on there just to give me a little more purchase, you know, right there in front of the grip. I think some people do some checkering right there that is really handy, right? It's expensive, but it feels awfully good. Let's just take a couple more shots. Uh, let's, we're not just going to shoot up the world with it. Uh, so we'll just go around and take some different different shots with, with it, and then we'll shoot the other one. Okay, so now like I say, uh, we have been impressed with it. You never know what's going to happen uh, at any given time, but uh, have been impressed with this gun. Uh, let's, uh, well, first off, I can't do any shooting with those two liters looking at me. I just can't handle them being there in the way like that. 
get those rascals out of the way. Okay, now we're free to shoot whatever we want. I'm going to top it off. Ooh, a tactical reload. And let's just uh, go around the horn here and take some shots as if we have some uh, ooh, desperados that are about to take me out. And I just need to deal with them. Okay, let's do that again. Just go around the horn, get a fresh magazine, get a couple shots. All right, RO Compact. I kind of forgot what I, what I was going to shoot. Uh, I don't know if that tells you anything, but, but it's just generally uh, a really good shooter. You don't notice that the recoil is boom, knocking you off, your sights off target to the point where you can't find the next target or anything. And uh, I thought I'd do the same with this one and see if I notice any big difference or anything. Or maybe you notice. We're using the same Springfield holster for both of them. That one sticks out a little more. Doesn't it? So I've got the same gun. It doesn't have quite as good a feel because it doesn't have the customized beaver tail or any of that. But it's a good old 1911. Got another round. Let's do it again just for good measure. Something fell, didn't it? <laughs> Good thing we're armed. Okay, when you hear strange sounds or something go bump in the night, you want to have a good firearm in hand. <laughs> All right. Oh, I see what it was. Yeah, I'm missing a target. It had to be something large. The target fell over. Okay, throwing these 230 grain rounds at it. Scared it off the range. that one twice then so anyway the point there is uh it 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 just feels fine you know uh both of them do i wouldn't have thought that in a lightweight shorter uh gun like that that it would be that shootable so i thought one other thing we might do is i think i about emptied my my mags here is uh just do a kind of a you know uh, empty a magazine on something there too give me even more insight into it haven't really done a lot of this before. The video, I have to say, that uh, shot them both a little bit just to remind myself where to hold the stupid things. Right? I didn't shoot at long range, but uh, just as a reminder. But they, uh, you know, the, the moral to the story here, I think, is that either one could serve you well. You know, they really could, even though there's a big difference. Well, I'll say big, a difference in weight. You know, as I say, alloy frame, this one weighs 29 ounces, right at it, 29, it's like an eighth of an ounce under or something. And this one weighs 37, I think it was, 37 ounces, uh, yeah, 37, I think, and uh, with the mag unloaded in it, okay, so, uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, you can tell, you can tell there's a difference, okay, so, let's just, uh, let me let me use this one first. Okay. We'll even top it off. Ooh. Nothing like having eight rounds at your disposal. That in a magazine. Another round in there. We'll do the same with this one. Uh, this one right here and uh, try the machine gun. That's what All right, we got the lightweight RO compact. We're gonna put some rounds on that guy right there. Now, it did get a little bouncy shooting it that fast, but I, I don't think I had too many misses. I might have. Uh, I felt like I could pretty well stay on target. And, uh, you know, those are 230 grain rounds, factory, you know, federal uh, American Eagle ammo. Let's do the same with this. See how much difference I notice? Hot. Definitely hot. It's a warm day. All right. Thing. Just gonna shoot it. I'm gonna pump some lead into that guy. Just 
just a little bit less, a uh, little bit less. Let's go back up here to the table. Just a little uh, difference there. I mean, well, I say just a little. Yeah, there's a difference, but in uh, in, a, in a practical sense, uh, for practical purposes, there's really not enough to to say. Well, I'm going to carry a 1911 for certain, and it can't be that because there's a little bit more recoil. You know, it recoils more. I, I can't carry that. I've got to carry this this full size gun. Or even that gun with a steel frame or whatever uh, just not enough difference and uh, so that's kind of the moral to the story for for John and me we are uh, and you know we shoot a lot you can tell you know John's a good shot he, he shoots a lot I shoot a lot I had to tell you that didn't I uh, and uh, our verdict is a verdict I didn't really expect myself to ever really come up with or say or admit to that these little 1911s uh, are, are pretty, whether it's a Springfield or a, okay, here we go. A Dan West, I could name a hundred different 1911 makers, right? Uh, it doesn't matter which one it is, really. Uh, this one seems to be a really fine gun. We've had good success with it and like it. Uh, but, you know, any of these that are in this weight category that are set up right, yeah, it might be worth your, uh, your, your looking at. Uh, if you're looking for a 1911 to carry, uh, you know, it just, even if you're really recoil sensitive, I, I just don't think it matters. If you're really recoil sensitive, maybe you shouldn't be even thinking about a 45. I don't know. But there's just not a lot of difference. And, uh, and on top of that, this uh, really, again, seems to be confirmed for, for us that it's a, it's a fine little gun shoots shoots well and i think one of the biggest negatives i could think of on it in the first video again was just the checkering of course which costs a lot to do is one thing that would uh, really enhance it and uh just seems reliable even though it's fairly light uh you can stay on target with it well and of course being able to carry it uh, uh a lighter gun is always a big advantage uh if you can carry a lighter smaller gun and that still shoots well it's uh it's always an advantage you know for ccw you know for carry but anyway just another look at the ro compact and our impressions really uh what our impressions have been in shooting both uh you know the comparison the five inch classic 1911 uh, all steel you know versus uh you know lighter weight 1911 that's fair amount shorter so anyway that probably didn't tell you much but maybe it did Life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute, and here at SDI, we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, well, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not. We'll just get seriously. Can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always going to be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.